Hello everybody and welcome to Bull Technology. If there's one game franchise that nostalgically takes me back to my childhood, it's The Sims. From playing The Sims 2 on a Dell Dimension 4500 to playing My Sims on our family Wii, no other game series elicits the same feeling of my childhood than The Sims, with the possible exception of Sim City, yet another Maxis game. But The Sims 4, EA's most recent PC entry into the series, has been an utter disappointment. From a lack of features to overpriced and excessive DLC, The Sims 4 has been one decades-long letdown after another. So today we will assess the state of The Sims franchise, and with a rumored Sims 5 release in the distant future, we will also note what the future of this iconic franchise looks like. Before we chronicle the many agonizing issues that have arisen in The Sims franchise, I feel it is important to give a brief history. The Sims games are a series of life simulation video games developed by the now defunct Maxis and published by Electronic Arts Entertainment. The first Sims game, simply titled The Sims, was published in 2000. The game development was largely led by Will Wright, the brain behind Sim City. The Sims featured pretty basic gameplay and simple character creation, but the sole function of The Sims games was established, and that was to simulate life. Create a character and a story, and live out that character and story. Over the next few years, The Sims would get a total of seven feature-filled expansion packs until 2004 rolled around. In fall of 2004, The Sims 2 was released with much fanfare. TS2 featured full 3D graphics and a revamped camera system, sim aging progression, better animations, and a host of other new features. From 2005 to 2008, The Sims 2 would receive a modicum of expansion and stuff packs. 2008 marked an important year in Sims history as The Sims 3 was born. TS3 featured a complete open world and endless customizability in building and design. From 2008 to 2014, many expansion and stuff packs were developed for The Sims 3, ranging from adding pets to Katy Perry-inspired items, yes. And this brings us to The Sims 4. Up to now, the consensus on all three mainline Sims games was pretty much the same. They were all pretty good, with The Sims, Sims 2, and Sims 3 getting 92, 90, and 86 Metacritic scores, respectively. But The Sims 4 saw a sharp decrease to only a 70 Metacritic score, and reviews on Steam of The Sims 4 are littered with reviews such as this. And for the record, I feel similarly. So what happened? Well, today I'm going to lay out three major issues with The Sims 4 and how these three issues are tarnishing The Sims brand. These issues are a lack of features, especially features that were included in previous games, outdatedness of the game, especially given that it's been almost a decade since The Sims 4's release, and DLC. EA seems to want to cash in rather than deliver a quality game. So let's begin with a lack of features. Uh, for starters, The Sims 4 released in 2014 with many features lacking that had been in games prior, most notably swimming pools, cars, an open world, half walls and curved walls, terrain editing, and a modicum of other features. Now yes, some features such as half walls, pools, and terrain editing have been added, but by and large, many features are still missing. The Sims 3 had a full open world where you could adventure to your heart's desire, but not in The Sims 4, and the complete lack of vehicles is puzzling for a life simulator. Even expansion packs seem dumbed down on features. The Sims 3 featured an expansion pack titled Pets, which featured cats, dogs, horses, and other small animals that you could have as pets. The Sims 4 came out with an expansion pack titled Cats and Dogs, which eliminated horses and small animals for $39.99. And if you wanted just horses, well, that'll be another $39.99. But more on that later. It just feels like with every successive Sims game, the game has improved and added features, and while Yes, there are new features in The Sims 4, there are also quite a lot of missing features. It's certainly a step backward. 
So let's now talk about the game's outdatedness. The Sims 4 was released in September of 2014. At the time of making this video, it is August of 2023, about a year before The Sims 3 can celebrate its 10th birthday, and EA is still continuing to release expansion packs for The Sims 4. For some perspective, there was only a five-year gap between The Sims 3 and The Sims 4, a four-year gap between The Sims 2 and The Sims 3, and yet again four years between the original Sims game and The Sims 2. This is by far and away the longest gap between Sims games, and it's clear that EA would rather develop cash grab expansion packs for The Sims 4 rather than invest in a new game. To highlight this, one can look at The Sims 4 MSRP. At the game's release, The Sims 4 retailed for $59.99, that is what I paid. Then in 2017, the game's MSRP dropped to $39.99. Uh, several years later, the game dropped again to $19.99, and until recently, the game could be purchased for as little as $4.99 on a sale. But in 2023, EA made the shocking announcement that The Sims 4 would become completely free to play. All of this is undoubtedly a ploy to lure in players in an effort to push sales of Sims 4 expansion packs. And this provides an excellent segue into yet another issue with The Sims 4, and this is the biggest issue with The Sims 4, and that is expansion packs and DLC. Previous Sims games featured purchasable DLC, much like The Sims 4, but recently it's gotten completely out of hand. Let's take stock. The first expansion pack to The Sims 4 was Get to Work in 2014 at a cost of $39.99. Then came Get Together in 2015 for another $39.99. Then City Living in 2016 for yet another $39.99. Then Cats and Dogs in 2017 for $39.99. Then Seasons in 2018 for another $39.99. Then Get Famous also in 2018 for $39.99. Then Island Living in 2019 for another $39.99. Then Discover University also in 2019 for $39.99, then Eco Lifestyle in 2020 for another $39.99, then Snowy Escape also in 2020 for another $39.99, then Cottage Living in 2021 for $39.99, then High School Years in 2022 for yet another $39.99, and then Growing Together in 2023 for another $39.99, and finally, for now that is, Horse Ranch, released in 2023 for, you guessed it, another $39.99. <sighs> but wait, there's more. The Sims 4 also has game packs, which are smaller and retail for $19.99, and there are, wait for it, 12 game packs total. Did you think I was done? Nope. The Sims 4 also has stuff packs, which retail for $9.99, and there are 18 stuff packs. Finally, there are newly introduced kits for The Sims 4. There are 23 kits that retail for $4.99 each. Disgusting, gross, revolting. So let's do a little quick math. There are 14 expansion packs times $39.99, plus 12 game packs times $19.99, plus 18 stuff packs times $9.99, and finally, add 23 times $4.99 for the total number of kits. This brings the total price for all Sims DLC at MSRP to $1,094.33. And if you paid the original $59.99 for the base game, you are looking at a grand total of $1,154.32. Now, Sims 4 fans might protest that there are sales all the time, but come on, this is disgusting. Half of this figure would be grotesque. And what's even more grotesque is they continue to create paid content for this game. So this $1,100 figure will only rise. EA isn't trying to develop a great Sims game. They are attempting to milk loyal fans and unsuspecting customers of hundreds of dollars on Sims 4 DLC. If EA wants to squeeze customers, that's one matter but also trashing a game's reputation by turning it into a DLC simulator? Well, that's borderline criminal if you ask me. It's clear that The Sims 4 doesn't live up to The Sims name. From the jump, it lacked and still lacks essential features. 
it's more than long in the tooth given its age, and the commodification of the game to promote paid DLC is appalling. Now, before I depart, I would like to briefly discuss ongoing rumors about The Sims 5. Allegedly, EA is planning for The Sims 5 to be completely free to play from day one, and the game is likely to feature some sort of in-app marketplace. Now again, this is mostly good speculation, but it seems as if things won't be getting much better for The Sims franchise. I used to be a proud Sims fan. I would joyfully sport my Plum Bob t-shirt in any setting, but the times have certainly changed. Gone are the days of The Sims 2 and 3. Gone are the days of releasing a polished and feature-filled game every few years. EA killed SimCity with one poor game release. Fans flocked to other games in the genre. EA is now slowly killing The Sims, and unless they revert course, The Sims won't be a game cherished for future generations. My only hope now is that another developer can pick up the reins and develop a better game. And while The Sims' name might not live on forever, the lives of our Sims, the characters and stories they tell, will live on. Maybe in another game and through other characters, but they will. Just as the cities I created in SimCity 4 live on in the cities I now create in Cities Skylines. Be sure to leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe. And thank you all for watching.